that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kiss the baby, you've kissed the face of God. is Mary and welcome to you all. I'm so glad that you've come tonight because I have a story that I want to tell you. It's the greatest love story you will ever hear. It's about God's plan for your life and for my life and about the greatest man that ever lived. My son. <laughs> oh I know every mother thinks her son or daughter is the greatest and yes I am prejudiced, but you listen to the story and decide for yourself. I was very young and very much in love with Joseph, a carpenter. In a day when marriages were prearranged by parents and so often love didn't even enter into the picture, I was privileged to have parents that believed in falling in love. Oh, Joseph was a good man. He was so kind and tender-hearted, and he truly loved me. I remember our betrothal, or engagement as you call it. I was so happy. My world was perfect. Joseph, wasn't our engagement party wonderful? Yes, it was wonderful, Mary, because it means we will finally be together. Nothing can come between us now. Nothing will break our covenant. You're right, Joseph. I better go. I'll come to you soon. I'll be waiting. Okay. Bye, Joseph. Bye. Mama, look what Joseph made me. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, Mary, it's absolutely lovely. Oh, Mary, Joseph is a good man. He is a good carpenter, very skilled. I'm sure your home will have the best furniture in all of Nazareth. It's good to see you so happy, Mary. I'm sure Joseph will make you a fine husband. It's obvious that he really loves you. Papa. Oh, and Mama. I thank you both for letting me follow my heart. Mary. Nothing can come between us, he said. I had my wedding all planned. Lots of flowers. Friends and family were all going to be there to help us celebrate our perfect little world. But it wasn't to be. God, in his divine wisdom, chose to send the angel Gabriel to bring me news that would change my life forever. Was I frightened? Oh, yes. I was frightened. My perfect little world was turned right upside down. But I loved God with all my heart, and I trusted Him. From heaven's throne, I bring a word of blessing. From heaven's throne, the Lord. 
Lord has chosen you to bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. God will create this miracle in you. The child will be the son of the Almighty. He will be great and reign from David's throne. So trust his heart and he will guide your journey. Don't be afraid, you will not be alone. Our God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, and you don't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. For with God, nothing is impossible. I'll trust that all things work for our good. child of Mary. So take this wife, believe what God will do.
of Galilee to be the mother of his son. What an honor. But with that honor came an awesome responsibility. Would people believe that the child I was carrying was God's son? Would Joseph believe me? Or would he think I had been unfaithful to him and had me stoned to death according to the law? Little did I know that the angel Gabriel had appeared to Joseph in a dream and he too was dealing with his own feelings of inadequacies. Don't you know my love for Mary? And you know the plans we've made? But the news she brings confuses me. Lord, I am afraid. It's hard for me to understand just what you have in store. And why you chose a carpenter like me to raise a lord of lords. Oh, I will love him. Give me faith to trust your plan. I will love him. Help my heart to understand I will never be ashamed Though people may condemn For this child does not belong to me But I belong to him There'll be times when I'm wrong So Lord, I ask forgiveness And I pray that I can be A father to your only son And that he clearly sees That I will love him Give me faith to trust your plan I will love I will never be ashamed, though people may be there, for this child does not belong to me. other and with God to guide us, we could overcome any obstacle. Well, my time to deliver was getting very, very close. About that time, Caesar Augustus imposed a new tax upon the people. He decreed that a national census be taken and that every man must return to his ancestral home to register. Since Joseph was from Bethlehem, he had to return there for the census. 
He did not want me to stay home all by myself, so I went along with him. It was a long, hard journey. Traveling on a donkey when you're great with child can be very uncomfortable, to say the least, but we were in love and kept our mind off our discomforts by making plans for our future. A future that we knew would not be easy. Why, already the past few months had been difficult ones with all the gossip and questioning looks. I wondered what would happen. I even wondered about Mama and Papa. They had doubts even. Even my Mama and Papa had doubts. I wondered and began to... I just didn't really think that they would even understand that the baby that I was soon to give birth to was the Son of God. Why? Why did Mary have to go? And to Bethlehem? It is so far. I am worried something might happen to her. Have you heard what people are saying? Oh, Papa, I'm worried something might happen to Mary. <sighs> Mama, calm down. Do you think God would let something bad happen to the mother of his son? Remember, the scriptures say the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. And if she's truly carrying the Son of God, she must go. So, you really believe she's telling the truth? Do you really believe that our Mary, Mary, is going to give birth to the Messiah? Yes, I do now. I had doubts. But our Mary is a good girl. She does not lie. And I'm sure in my heart that this child is special. But Papa, we are common and poor. We have nothing to offer. Neither do Mary and Joseph. Oh, surely the King of Kings, the Messiah, will be born of royalty in a great palace with the finest of clothing and beautiful jewels. <laughs> him with riches far greater than gold and silver. They will love him. They will teach him to love God and keep the commandments. They will teach him to love that which is true and pure and holy. Of that I am sure. 
Yes, I see, you are right. But I wish I could believe that Mary was truly going to give birth to the Messiah. Could you imagine? What an honor to be the chosen one. Oh, what a privilege. But what will people say? What are they already saying? Oh, my Mary. Oh, Papa. I'm worried something might happen to her. Mama, don't worry. Trust God. He has a plan. And Mary is part of that plan. And always remember. Oh, God is too good to be mistaken. God is too wise to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you can't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust him. of Bethlehem how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent storms go by yet in thy dark street shine the everlasting light on the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee Yes, we will. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Mary, we have a room. I wish we had a better place for your baby to be born. It smells in the stable, and it's not very clean. This is fine. from the cold. Oh, 
your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save your sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this child that you'll deliver will soon deliver you boy. We loved him from the very moment we laid our eyes on him. But we felt the awesomeness of the moment. We were holding in our arms God's son, the king of kings, the savior of the world. Just a tiny baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and yet God's precious gift clothed in glory, splendor, and majesty. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so glad it's Christmas. All the tinsel and lights and the presents are nice, but the real gift is you. Happy birthday, Jesus. 
it's all about you. Happy birthday, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so glad it's Christmas. All the days of the days and the presents are nice. And the real gift is you. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so glad. Father's 
wondered if God had made a mistake in choosing us to be the parents of his son. After all, we were so inexperienced, so young, and so afraid. But God chose to send angels to our stable. They told us that while they were tending their sheep on the hillside, angels had appeared to them. The angels told them that a savior had been born in the city of David, Bethlehem, and that they would find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. What confirmation could we ask for? God trusted us. Now we needed to trust him. Celebrate the child who is the light. Now the darkness is over. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. 
Benjamin, we must tell everyone what we've experienced and seen. Yes, Lucas. We must tell the good news to everyone. I still can't believe God would choose us to see his son, the Messiah. But we are lowly shepherds. Have you ever seen an angel? We have. We were watching our sheep when suddenly an angel appeared before us. We were very afraid. But he told us not to be afraid because he had good news. He told us that a baby was born in our city, a savior who is Christ the Lord, and that we'd find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Then there's a whole multitude of angels praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And everything was just how the angel had said. What an honor, what an awesome experience. Our son was perfect. I knew he had been sent to save the world. I did not know how, but I knew that he would. When Jesus was just a very few weeks old, according to the Jewish custom, we took him to the temple in Jerusalem to be dedicated to the Lord. The prophetess Anna, an elderly widow who lived at the temple, and Simeon, a just and devout priest, were there praying when we arrived. Shalom, my child. Shalom. My name is Mary, Mary? and this is my husband, Joseph. Joseph. This is our son. What a beautiful child. And his name? The Messiah. The Messiah? We were wondering, perhaps Simeon would be available to pray for the child. Oh yes, I'll get Simeon. Simeon, Simeon, a young couple out there with a baby, they asked to speak to you. He told us we were blessed, privileged to be raising God's son. Our son would be a light and would bring great joy. But he also said that a sword would pierce through my soul. For the first time, I began to have doubts about our perfect little world. What would happen to my son? I was to ponder these things in my heart many times over the years. But for the time being, I laid these thoughts aside. After all, Joseph and I had a beautiful baby boy to care for. We had each other. We had plenty of food to eat. We had a roof over our head. Little did we know that wise men from the east were searching for our son to worship him. They had followed a star in the sky and it had led them to Jerusalem. When they arrived there, they went to see King Herod to ask him if he might know where the baby was. The prophets, they were told that it had been foretold that the baby boy would be born in Bethlehem.
Herod decided to call together the chief priests and scribes to ask them if they knew where the baby might be. They too told him that it had been prophesied that a baby would be born in Bethlehem. And so Herod told the wise men. When the wise men left Herod, the light, the star that had brought them thus far, went before them again and led them directly to our humble stable. They were so overjoyed to see the baby Jesus, and they brought him beautiful gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, and they worshipped him.
you were making plans to return to Nazareth and the home that Joseph had prepared for us. But in God's plan, that wasn't to be. An angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told us, told him to take us to Egypt. Because King Herod was very angry and very jealous of Jesus. The angel told Joseph that Herod would find our child and kill him to prevent him from becoming the king. We left immediately and fled under cover of night for Egypt.
you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect land? And a sleeping child you were holding is the grave. to Nazareth after Herod died. Things for us seemed to go well as Jesus was growing up. Joseph was teaching him to be a skilled carpenter. He was such a good boy. Perfect. An ideal child. Oh yes, I know. You think I'm being prejudiced again, don't you? But he really was. But not all of his siblings were fond of him. In fact, some of them were very jealous and seemed to be competing against him. A normal family, I guess. I did not quite know just how much Jesus understood about his mission here on earth until one day when he was 12 years old. We had gone to the temple in Jerusalem for the Passover feast and we had traveled quite a distance on our way home when we discovered Jesus was not on the caravan. We had assumed that he was further back with some of his friends and some of his family. Simeon's words began echoing in my ears. A sword will pierce through your soul. A sword will pierce through your soul. What if something had happened to him? But we did find Jesus. Three days later, he was in the temple speaking with the chief priests and the scribes, astounding them with his wisdom and his knowledge of the scriptures. <laughs> Calm and collected mother that I was, I frantically scolded him and I asked him why he did this to us. And he calmly asked us why we had to even look for him. Didn't we know that he had to be about his father's business? Joseph and I, we didn't understand what he meant at the time. When Jesus was 30 years old, I was privileged to attend his very first miracle. We had gone to a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the host had run out of wine. Jesus turned water into wine. I was so proud of my son. From that time on, Jesus continued to do Miracle after miracle. He healed everyone that came to him. The sick, the lame, and the blind. He had so much love and so much compassion for the poor and the hungry and the lonely. He took time for everyone. From the smallest child to the eldest grandparent. you know that your baby boy would one day walk on 
would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would decide to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The blind will lead, the dumb will speak, the raised you know that your baby boy was born of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect land? sleeping child you were holding is the great Jesus, and he had quite a following. But as intensely as some loved him, there were those that fiercely hated him and wanted him dead. They were the ones that got their way in the end. He was only 33 years old and in the prime of his life. He said these things had to be the reason he came to earth. He said it was the only way that he could save the souls of mankind. My precious, precious son was beaten and bruised beyond recognition. And then he was crucified. He willingly gave his life. I did not understand. I only knew that the sword that Simeon spoke of was piercing right through my soul. Somebody! Somebody do something! My son! My precious son, I love you! My son! My son, I love you! <laughs>
Yes, morning did come. And yes, Jesus did rise from the dead on the third day, just as he predicted. You see, they were powerful enough to kill my son because he was human. But the grave was not powerful enough to keep him because he was God. After Jesus rose from the dead, he was seen by his disciples for 40 days. And during that time, he spoke to them of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And while they were watching, he was taken up from them and into a cloud and right out of their sight. And while they were standing, gazing into the skies, two men in white appeared to them and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you staring into the skies? This very same Jesus that has just been taken up from you into heaven will come again the very same way that you have just seen him go.
the one who was sinless and perfect, gave his life for your sins and for my sins. I know and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died, and that he rose again to give you and me eternal life just by believing and asking him to come into our heart and cleanse us from all our sin. He's been guiding my life and I've learned to trust in his leading even when my heart was breaking. You see, you may not always understand God's plan, but remember one thing. He loves you. No matter who you are, and it doesn't matter what you've done, He loves you. You see, you cannot buy God's love because it's a free gift for you to accept or reject. The choice is yours.
My heart is filled with joy tonight when I think that sinners like you and like me have the privilege of coming into the presence of a holy God and all because nearly 2,000 years ago there was that first Christmas. The story doesn't end at Bethlehem. It ends at the cross, culminates at, at an open tomb, and the Lord Jesus Christ, witnessed by the disciples, went back to heaven one day. But the angels immediately appeared after Christ disappeared, and they said, This same Jesus, who has gone from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. Joy awaits us, the joy of meeting him again, because Jesus Christ is coming soon, and he is coming for those who are prepared. You have seen demonstrated in music, in acting, the story from the cradle to the grave, and finally the ascension. I wonder, I'd like to ask you in just the closing moments tonight of this presentation, are you ready to meet him? If Jesus Christ came in the clouds of glory tonight, would you be prepared to go into heaven with him? The Bible tells us that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. My friend, you and I are sinners in need of a Savior. Jesus Christ came to take away our sin. If you will repent of your sin and deliberately invite Christ into your heart and life, he will give you life eternal. And when Christ comes, whenever it becomes your turn or mine to meet him, we can meet him with joy and not with sadness. We can meet him with tremendous delight. I'm going to ask you right now if you would kindly bow your heads, close your eyes with me, and I'm going to lead you in what I will call a sinner's prayer. And if you will pray it from your heart and really mean it, the Lord Jesus Christ will be born in your heart. And then you can rest assured that someday you will share heaven with him. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent of my sin. I turn my back upon all of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. It may be that you have prayed that prayer for the first time in your life. Others, perhaps you've wandered away from the Lord. You've known him at one time, but you've strayed from the fold of safety and from peace with God. I'm going to invite you to come just while the choir sings one more song. to Come and meet me here at the front. We have a book for the adults and one for the children that we'd like to give to you. If you pray to receive the Lord as Savior, we'd like to share this with you and a word of congratulations and greeting because that is the most important decision that you will ever make in all of your life, the decision to receive Christ as Savior. You can be sure that you will have the most wonderful Christmas that you've ever had if you will give Christ first place in your life. God bless you.